Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation CF Education Day webcast, Non-Tuberculosis Mycobacteria in Cystic Fibrosis. I'm Leslie Hazel, Director of Patient Resources at the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. This webcast is hosted by the Foundation and supported through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech. To learn more about CF clinical research, CF lung health and lung disease, nutrition, germs, infection control, healthcare coverage, and more, please watch an archive webcast on the Foundation's website. Joining me to talk about NTM is Dr. Jerry Nick, who is the director of the Adult CF Program at National Jewish Medical and Research Center and is also a professor at the University of Colorado in Denver. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you, Leslie. So my first question is, what is NTM or non-tuberculosis mycobacteria? Non-tuberculosis mycobacteria are a large family of over 100 different germs um, that are mainly distinguished by the fact that they grow very slowly both in the, in the lung and in the laboratory. Um, the reason they're called non-tuberculous mycobacteria is that even though they're genetically related to uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is a highly contagious and lethal pulmonary infection, the non-tuberculous mycobacteria behave very differently uh, both as a disease and uh, in the laboratory. The non-tuberculous mycobacteria, as I said, are a very broad family, but there's two in particular that uh, patients with cystic fibrosis um, are most uh, often faced with, and those are the mycobacterium avium complex, and, uh, which is a, a fairly slow-growing mm -hmm. uh, mycobacteria, and the mycobacterium abscessus family which is a more rapid growing mycobacteria. So most people are first told that they have NTM through a sputum culture. You know, what does that mean? And when they find that out, what happens next? I guess that probably also fits in with how's it diagnosed? Right, well, so when you first, uh, when a patient first has a positive culture mm -hmm. for NTM, uh, that does not, uh, mean that the infection is present, but it just means that the doctors and the patients have to think seriously about the possibility that NTM disease is present. We've found that about a third of patients that have a positive culture for NTM at one point in their life never have a subsequent uh, positive mm -hmm. culture, and about a third will have positive cultures episodically throughout their life but it doesn't seem like it causes uh, acceleration of their CF lung disease. Mm -hmm. So the, the uh, first positive culture initiates a process that's actually a three-part process in uh, attempting to establish the diagnosis of NTM lung disease. And this is just a, a slide of the way that we think about um, making this diagnosis. Like you said, it all starts with a, the first positive NTM culture. And at that point, um, your doctor will ask you to provide additional uh, sputum samples over the course of months or even years. Um, and with each sample, they'll test for NTM. Mm -hmm. If uh, it turns out that multiple positive uh, samples of NTM are confirmed, um, the patient needs to be evaluated for the presence of NTM by a CAT scan, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, can have some features that are suggestive of NTM, and also to establish if the disease is progressing uh, relative to earlier CAT scans. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, consideration has to be made whether it's M. abscessus, which is considered to be a more serious form of NTM disease, or if um, it's M. Uh, mycobacterium avium complex, which is generally thought to be a, a little less serious, but in certain individuals can cause uh, significant disease. And the consideration uh, always has to include whether the lung disease is progressing faster than we would anticipate based on uh, a patient with cystic fibrosis who's getting good care um, from their CF center. If um, it turns out that um, the sputum never again shows a um, positive mycobacteria or only occasionally shows a positive mycobacteria, the thought process is that the patients will continue to be uh, monitored for symptoms of disease progression, 
um, throughout the course of their life. So what are, um, so we talked about sputum culture finding it. What are the symptoms, um, or do people with CF have symptoms if they have NTM? Well, so what we, the symptoms of NTM are almost identical to the same daily symptoms that CF patients often have, mm -hmm. um, but it can be increased cough, it can be increased sputum production, accelerated lung function decline. Occasionally people with NTM will have fever as well, which is unusual in cystic mm -hmm. fibrosis. So when we, um, when we think about the decision to treat NTM disease, mm -hmm. we have to consider all of the other uh, factors that could be causing these symptoms. And the most important one is if a patient with cystic fibrosis is having just a typical exacerbation due to pseudomonas, staph, or cepatia. Um, so we always try to aggressively treat the common uh, infections in cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. The second consideration is that a new infection with a, a more common uh, bacteria, especially cepatia or staph, um, has occurred. So we, we always look in the sputum cultures for uh, the presence of new bacteria. And then things like cystic fibrosis related diabetes, which can be difficult to diagnose, can also accelerate lung function decline um, and has to be addressed mm -hmm. and, and either ruled out or treated. Other rare complications, such as allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, can uh, look very similar to NDN, NTM lung disease. And uh, considerations such as poorly controlled sinus infections can accelerate um, lung disease, or even things like chronic aspiration can mm -hmm. accelerate um, cystic fibrosis lung disease. So the, the physicians and the patients have to consider all of these things before determining if the NTM is actually the cause of a decline in, in, lung, in lung function. So um, is, how else besides a decline in lung function or a more rapid worsening of lung disease, is there any other way that having NTM affects the health of people with cystic fibrosis? Well, in general, things like weight loss, decreased energy, mm -hmm. uh, low-grade fevers, those would be some of the systemic features of mm -hmm. NTM. Um, but those can also uh, happen as a result of pseudomonas, uh, diabetes, or many other factors as well. Now, I know that there has been an increase in the number of uh, NTM reported in people with cystic fibrosis. Why is there all of a sudden this increase in finding this organism in the lungs of people with CF? Yes, that's a very interesting question, and we, uh, we don't know the answer for sure, but I think almost everyone believes that part of the reason we're seeing more NTM is that it's related as a risk factor to the age of mm -hmm. the patient. And, and as we know, the survival in cystic fibrosis has dramatically improved. So more and more CF patients around the United States are becoming middle-aged or even in their elderly years. And uh, this, we think, is uh, part of the reason that we're seeing an increase in NTM, that over time, the risk for acquiring NTM uh, mm -hmm. gets greater and greater. We also think that physicians are more aware now that NTM is a very important complication of cystic fibrosis, and they're looking for it more carefully, and that may contribute to, to more mm -hmm. uh, NTM. There's been improvements in our ability to recover NTM from the sputum and CF patients, and that's a part of the reason we think that it's more common. So is there, um, where, ha, oh, let me, how do people with CF get NTM, and it, are there any things that they can do to avoid getting this organism? Well, we, we believe that virtually all uh, patients with cystic fibrosis acquired NTM from the environment. Uh, from soil, dust, or uh, water sources. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have strict guidelines to prevent uh, exposure to NTM, but in general, avoiding uh, inha inhaling uh, soil, dust, aerosolized water sources would be uh, the kind of recommendations that mm -hmm. um, we would have to try to reduce uh, exposure to NTM. So like wearing a, a mask when you're outside working in the garden or mowing the lawn or something like that might be helpful. Yeah, I think that would be the, the best precaution. Mm -hmm. um, 
But we don't we don't know for sure uh, the best the best recommendations. Can can anyone get NTM? Um, like, can a person with CF who maybe has NTM give it to somebody in their household, or if somebody in their household has it, can they give it to the person with CF? Is there that person to person transmission with this organism? Well, NTM is what is one of the bacteria that are termed opportunistic infections. So they really, um, a person that is completely healthy uh, would never ex be expected to acquire NTM. Pa the people that have NTM or acquire NTM have some kind of underlying medical condition, mm -hmm. uh, either chronic lung disease or some kind of immunosuppression that makes them vulnerable to the NTM infection. As I said before, we believe that nearly all infections in cystic fibrosis by NTM occur from the environment. Mm -hmm. But the potential is there that patients could have uh, a person to person spread of the infection. And I think the most important consideration is that nearly every cystic fibrosis patient that has NTM also has Pseudomonas staph or cepatia. So the same kind of precautions Mm -hmm. that we use to prevent the spread of those bacteria need to be continued in the presence of NTM as well. So cleaning your hands well, using a tissue and cleaning your hands when you cough, you know, avoiding other people who have cystic fibrosis or who may be immunocompromised, like somebody who's had a transplant, would all be good, helpful um, things to do to prevent that transmission to somebody else. Right. These are contact precautions for direct uh, contact with mucus and mm -hmm. and um, respiratory secretions. Um, it's not. These are certainly not highly transmissible diseases. But the same kind of uh, precautions that are used mm -hmm. to avoid spread of Pseudomonas or cepatia um, should be continued uh, in the presence of NTM. So we've talked about diagnosis. We've talked about finding it. How it affects a person with CF. Comes the million dollar question. How do you treat it? Well, it's, so this is a very difficult subject. There's no proven studies on a, on a uh, effective treatment plan. So your doctor will have a hard time telling you the success rate. Um, we know that it can be treated successfully. Um, and if there's clear evidence that NTM lung disease is occurring, um, it should be treated with antibiotics. The usual strategy is a three antibiotic uh, course and because it's such a slow growing uh, bacteria the course of treatment has to be very prolonged and often it can go on a year or 18 months um, mm -hmm. in an attempt to eradicate it from the sputum. It's not always possible to eradicate the NTM from the sputum just like it's uh, frequently not possible to eradicate pseudomonas or staph from the sputum. However, patients can benefit from aggressive treatment, even if they don't ultimately clear the NTM from their lungs. So it really sounds like making the decision to treat is really an open conversation between the person with CF and the physician and the healthcare team at the center, try and figure out, is this what we want to do and would that be helpful? So let me put it this way, if I'm an adult with cystic fibrosis and I meet the criteria for a diagnosis of having an NTM infection, what would you, what would we be talking about? Well, I think we have to sit down together and review all the evidence that uh, suggests that NTM is causing acceleration mm -hmm. of the cystic fibrosis lung disease. So that includes um, the doctor and the patient both uh, being on the same page with regard to multiple sputum cultures that, that show the presence of NTM and acceleration of disease despite aggressive treatment mm -hmm. of all known uh, cofactors. And then at that point, you know, I advise our patients that even though we don't have a proven treatment strategy, we have treatment strategies that have worked with other patients. And these are difficult uh, drug combinations, usually three drugs, um, usually a combination of IV or oral, depending on, mm -hmm. the, on the specific NTM that we're trying to treat and that it requires close monitoring and side effects and toxicities are common. So both the doctor and the patient have to be convinced that, that the NTM is an important 
uh, contributor to their health and that it has to be treated. And all of this treatment is on top of all of the regular treatments to keep the lungs healthy and a person with CF healthy, is that correct? Yes, exactly. The, at the time that a patient first uh, has a positive culture-free NTM, all aspects of CF care mm -hmm. need to be reviewed and especially uh, aggressive airway clearance is essential. Our antibiotics are not very effective, so we need to have as much help as we can from clearing the, the airways every mm -hmm. day. Um, and those are, are a, a consideration throughout the treatment of the NTM infection, as well as the potential that Pseudomonas or staph could flare during the treatment of the NTM mm -hmm. infection as well. So the last question that we're following up, especially since this is, seems to be a new organism, what, if any, research is going on related to NTM and cystic fibrosis? Well, research has been very slow, but the, the general themes uh, of NTM-related research are we're trying to find new diagnostic mm -hmm. tests that are much more rapid than the cultures, which can take up to eight weeks to become mm -hmm. positive. We're trying to uh, introduce new drugs that are more effective as antibiotics mm -hmm. against the NTM, which uh, have very specific uh, resistant patterns different from Pseudomonas and staph. And then what we'd like to do is to establish a proven uh, course of treatment mm -hmm. so our patients can have a reliable estimate of how long they need to be treated and what the potential success rate is. But these are, these are research uh, projects that are going slowly. So, thank you, Jerry. It was a very informative discussion about NTM and cystic fibrosis. You can learn more about uh, research that might be going on related to MTM and cystic fibrosis by going to clinicaltrials.gov and using the keywords cystic fibrosis and NTM. Additionally, um, the nationaljewish.org has information about NTM in general that you may find helpful. This concludes our webcast about non-tuberculosis mycobacterium and cystic fibrosis. I would like to thank you for watching, Jerry for helping us learn more about this organism and how it affects people with cystic fibrosis, Rick Vasta and the technical crew, Melissa Chin, Melissa Muller, Genentech, and the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation for making this webcast possible. Thank you.